so I just built a Hackintosh. Here are the parts, and here's how it performs. How's it going folks? This is Jeff Benjamin with the 9to5Mac. I wanted to show you my Hackintosh that I just built. Now I've been spending the last week or so putting this thing together, installing Mac OS on this Hackintosh, and it's working pretty well. I'm pretty satisfied with how it's turned out. If you want details on all the parts, then you can check the description below. Also check out the post on 9to5Mac. This is the Corsair Carbide case. It has sound dampening material on both of the covers, also on the little top panel that's removable. So you see the sound dampening material there and you'll find the same material on the front of the case. There's also a removable dust cover that exposes the fan and you'll see the storage bays below that where my SSDs reside. And above the fan, you'll see the five and a quarter inch bays where you can add different peripherals, drives, etc. It's not the prettiest case, but it gets the job done. There's tons of space inside and it does a fairly good job of keeping things quiet. Now here's what you're really interested in, right? This is the Noctua CPU cooler, which sits on top of an Intel i7 quad core 6700K Skylake overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz. And the Noctua cooler does a good job of keeping the CPU temperatures at bay while remaining relatively quiet. Now the motherboard is the Gigabyte Z170X Gaming 7. It's a full ATX board with four DIMM slots. I currently have 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RAM in there. And the board is large enough to easily accommodate large GPUs and pretty much whatever else you want to add on. And there's lots of connectivity options. You have dual ethernet. There's plenty of USB ports, including a Thunderbolt 3 port slash USB 3.1 type C port. So plenty of connectivity options. The GPU is a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti from EVGA. This is a Founders Edition. It's a blower style card. And I'm using a 750 watt EVGA Supernova PSU. This 802.11ac slash Bluetooth card works out of the box with the Hackintosh, which is really great. It makes network connectivity effortless. And for storage, I'm using the fairly slow by today's standard SanDisk Ultra 2 960 gigabyte SSD. So the build is finished. Let me go to about this Mac and show you the specs. So it is a 4.01 gigahertz Intel Core i7. That's what Mac OS is reporting at least. It is overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of DDR4, and the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. So how does this thing perform? Well, before we get to any benchmarks, I wanna open up Intel Power Gadget and show you that the CPU is actually running overclocked. You can see 4.6 gigahertz there. So even though system information is reporting 4.01 gigahertz, you can see that it actually is running at 4.6 gigahertz, and that makes a big difference in performance. So let's go ahead and run some benchmarks. So to test the GPU, we're gonna use Valley, we're gonna use Heaven, we're gonna use Cinebench. So let's look at the results here. So you can see the Heaven Ultra benchmark, 137.4 frames per second, Valley Ultra, 114 frames per second, and Cinebench, 122.77 frames per second. So not as good as the results that you'll find on a Windows-based machine, but still really good for the Mac. Now, more importantly, let's talk about Hackintosh versus Macintosh. Now this is CPU performance. Notice how the Hackintosh overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz is faster than any Mac Apple makes and is faster in multi-core performance than any Mac Apple makes outside of the eight and 12 core Xeon based Mac Pros. Very impressive for the 6700K. Now the last thing I wanna do is the Bruce X 5K test. This is to test Final Cut Pro 10 performance it isn't the be all end all test by any means, but a lot of people like to use Bruce X to gauge Final Cut Pro 10 performance. So I've started the benchmark. Basically you're exporting this 5K timeline and you're seeing how long it takes. So I started at 1238 on the dot and you can see we're about 16 seconds into the test and almost finished. We're 21 seconds into the test as you can see in the upper right hand corner and we are finished. So even with beta drivers, the GTX 1080 Ti perform well with the Bruce X benchmark. In an upcoming video, I'm going to show you step by step how I installed Mac OS on this Hackintosh. What you'll learn is that a Hackintosh isn't perfect, but it's a pretty good stopgap solution for those looking for more power, more expandability, and a quieter machine. If you're looking forward to the tutorial, leave me a thumbs up and let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. This is Jeff. 
with 9to5Mac.